so we were never able to get the same numbers that we had before, partly because the university wouldn't let us stay anywhere for very long, and we, we, we realized that. So um, as spring came, as we approached the spring, we came 1986. Up of 1986, which is when big protests usually happen. If you look at the history of student movements, you build up over the fall and winter and by spring, you know, that's the big time. So we had in, around the country, uh, starting that winter, students started at other, on other campuses, uh, started building small shanties, uh, uh, similar to the ones we thought that um, South Africans were living in, uh, poor South Africans, which is the majority of South Black South Africans in South Africa. So our plan, though, was a little different. It wasn't just a symbolic shanty town. We put it in the middle of campus, and we thought the police would come to arrest us very quickly, probably give us some hours, just a few hours there, and then we will surround them. And that scenario played out just as we thought. So the first night they came in the middle of the night when there were no students around, but there was a thousand or so of us, and they arrested many of us, and they put on buses and people tried to block them, and we were brought to jail. Um, two days later, though, we rebuilt the shanty town bigger, more people, and in the end, much more militants. Again, they went in to arrest people. We surrounded the buses and the people being arrested, and the police had to fight their way off campus. People built barricades and, and, and fought back. Um, unfortunately, that caused a big divide in the movement that had always been there, and we struggled to, 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 to heal it. Um, and we had with the shanty towns, but it broke apart again. But fortunately, that summer, the regents met again, and they finally decided, the majority of them, to divest the university's $3.1 billion invested in companies doing business in South Africa. So it was a tremendous, tremendous victory. Um, and uh, in, the, in the ensuing years, there was a lot of other pressure on South Africa. Uh, both from within and without, including our, our earlier protests. And eventually the white government said, hey, we've got to make some changes or the whole thing is going to come crashing down. Our economy will end up in a major war and many people will die and many people will leave. So they agreed to release the leaders of, uh, of the liberation movement and they agreed eventually to um, free and fair elections which the Black Liberation Movement, the African National Congress won, and they've been in power, winning South Africa ever since.